Hi everyone and welcome to uh, this uh, final November masterclass uh, for the Social Mobility Commission, um, our employer event, T-Levels. So today we're going to find out what, why, where and how. Um, so everything you've ever wanted to know about T-Levels. Um, the session is going to be recorded um, and also there's captions for you if you um, need those. So today's session <coughs> is, I'm just going to do a bit of housekeeping. And then I'm going to introduce you to um, the chair for today. So uh, that is our deputy chair, uh, Alan Francis. Um, and then he's going to provide a bit of context to T-Levels and why that's important to him and the Social Mobility Commission. Uh, then we're joined by uh, Kath from the Association of Colleges, who's going to give a bit of an overview of T-Levels. Um, and then Alan's going to chair a panel comprising of Kath um, and Ashworth from Pearson's uh, who's an employer who's engaged with T-Levels um, and also, also Bernie Turner from uh, Dudley College of Technology who are a provider of uh, T-Levels or have worked with employers to deliver T-Levels with them. Um, and then after that, we've obviously got options for you to ask questions uh, and then we'll give you at the end a, a bit of a wrap up and next steps and what resources are available out there for you. Um, so if I could ask you to remain on mute uh, please use the Q&A function to ask questions. Uh, we have actually disabled the chat function, um, but you can contact us as hosts and panellists um, if you have any urgent questions. Uh, the webinar, as I said, will be recorded and is being recorded. The slides will be shared with you afterwards and we'll also provide a recap of the whole event um, and closed captions are available if you do require them. Um, so it's without further ado, I... Um, introduce you to Alan Francis. Alan Francis is the Deputy Chair of the Social Mobility Commission. Um, he's also Principal and Chief Executive of Oldham College and has been so since 2010. Um, he's also one of the government's T-level ambassadors. Um, and the picture, he'll explain more, but the picture behind him is their T-level <laughs> campus. So um, Alan, over to you. Thank you very much, Paula, and a very warm Welcome to everybody. So yes, the picture behind me is uh, our new construction centre at Oldham College, which is uh, teaching T-levels amongst other things, um, uh, but a very successful so far T-level programme. So we thought that would be an appropriate background for this discussion. I'm just gonna kick off a little bit by talking about why at Oldham College we particularly like T-levels. Uh, hopefully that might give some of you, uh, particularly if you're finding your way with T-levels, some insight into why a further education college would see them in a positive way. And then I'm going to hand over to Kath, the Association of Colleges, who's got a very good, I think, sense of the overview of curriculum uh, in uh, further education. And she's going to talk to you much more detail about uh, T-levels before we open up for discussion with the rest of the panel. So I think, I think just in terms of why we are interested in them, those of you who don't know the background, um, they were first kind of broached as part of the Sainsbury Review in 2016, uh, which in itself was a kind of um, uh, part of a, a series of reports that looked at the quality of technical education and training in the United Kingdom and uh, recommended reforms to strengthen and improve the quality of provision. And in particular, what T-Levels, I think, do is they seek to improve the academic content but very much the applied content of technical um, education. They're taught over a two year period uh, um, in the 16 to 18 phase. Uh, so they effectively um, mirror the kind of alternative to A-levels. Um, well, I suppose you could see um, as A-levels, T-levels, apprenticeships, and then wider set of vocational qualifications as the kind of whole kind of picture. And T-levels are really there to encourage people who might have only thought of doing A-levels to consider an alternative with a very strong technical focus. Um, there's, they're coming out in phases, so they're uh, um, in different sectors, coming out at different times. I'm not sure Kath will take you through that. But the things that really attract us to T-levels is the sense that, first of all, they're written by employers, and that is different to the qualifications that they replace. So the content is very strongly shaped by employers. My teams, my, my curriculum staff, all say they think that the content is stronger than the qualifications they replace. 
But the thing that are learners in particular are attracted to uh, is the substantial uh, industry placement. Um, and this is in some respects the most difficult but and most controversial bit of T-levels, but the sense that actually what uh, learners gain from this is a, a set of uh, integrated knowledge that's both applied and uh, academic about the area they're studying, but a really strong component of what in the workplace are the issues that they need to understand in order to apply that effectively. And this, I think, is about making them much more employable and uh, perhaps uh, giving them much better skills and knowledge than they would have otherwise. So our focus at my college, as with many, I think Dr. Dudley or later, and they're going to would say a very similar thing, I'm sure. The real purpose of our college is to prepare our young people and adults for work. They arrived uh, uh, with us sometimes uh, quite away from that in terms of their knowledge, skills and their behaviour and T levels amongst their other curriculum are very much, in, in our view, a way of helping bridge that gap. And we think uh, a much improve, uh, much of an improvement on the previous qualifications. So I hope that gives you a kind of sense of why we would want to teach them. I hope when you've heard through the details of them uh, that uh, you'll kind of uh, um, perhaps draw the same conclusions yourself. And, and if you're not currently uh, working with a T-level provider, perhaps you might want to in order to uh, help them and to help you and to help the young people get ready for work in the way that I've described. So for a much better description, I think, of what T-levels actually include and, and involve. I'm going to hand over to Kath. Um, Kath is hugely experienced in the whole world of vocational technical education, uh, currently working with the Association of Colleges. She's got a long list of projects and previous things that she's done with them, uh, is extremely well respected in the field. So with no more ado, I'll hand over to Kath. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Oh my goodness. I feel I've got a lot to live up to um, this afternoon, um, colleagues. So good afternoon. I'm absolutely delighted to be with you. Um, as Alan said, I'm Kath Sazen and um, I work for the Association of Colleges and I've been working on T-levels um, since 2015. So um, I love talking about T-levels. So let's get going and start unpacking um, these qualifications this afternoon. So as we move on to the first slide, um, the first thing, going back to what Alan was saying, was that in 2015, the government commissioned a review of technical education. The background to this was to meet the skills gap and raise productivity. Um, it was felt that the academic pathway, so that's GCSEs, A-levels and a university degree, was very well understood, but that the technical or vocational pathway was complex. So what qualifications do you need um, to become a dental technician, for example? So that was the background to the review. The review, as Alan said, was led by Lord Sainsbury, um, who is a Labour peer. He was supported by business, HE and college leaders. And the panel advised ministers on improving the quality of technical education in England they found a compelling case for change and recommended comprehensive reform. So they recommended the development of 15 technical routes. And those routes cover things from health and science, through hair and beauty, catering, digital, business, to land-based routes as well. So there were 15 technical routes that they would encompass all employment-based and college-based training. So effectively apprenticeships and what became known as T-levels. So these qualifications are based on the same standards. There are some qualifications such as performing arts and sport, which don't have technical standards. And just for your information, they will sit alongside academic qualifications. So they will sit alongside A-levels. Um, in that in the qualification landscape and there will also be more additional technical vocational qualifications again as Alan alluded to um, we expect further details of those in the very near future so the development of the new flagship technical education programs or T levels is to be delivered through exclusive license now that may or may not mean anything to you, but for colleges, it's quite significant um, because here we have a market of qualifications. So we have a number of different awarding organizations that offer um, these qualifications, but for T-levels, 
it's much more like the international market. So one T level is offered by one organization. So at the same time as the introduction of T levels, there's also a radical streamlining of existing technical technical qualifications rather from entry to level four five. So level four five is HND, HNC type qualifications. So when I um, was doing my education uh, many moons ago, a lot of my friends went off and did HNCs and HNDs, whereas nowadays a lot of people skip from that level three, so A levels and vocational qualifications straight to level six. So there's also going to be an emphasis on those higher technical qualifications. And the idea was to simplify the system for students and for employers. The government accepted all the recommendations in the 2016 skills plan and committed to deliver the first T levels from September 2020. So what are they? T levels are new two year, as Alan said, two year technical education courses for 16 to 19 year olds that will follow GCSEs. For students who are not ready to start a T level at 16, there is a transition program aimed at enhancing their existing skills so that they can start at 17. There is also currently a pilot delivering T levels to adults just to see whether it would also work for adults, because obviously T levels are large qualifications, as we will come, we will come to see. Um, and so there are questions there about whether they are right to meet the needs of adults who perhaps need smaller qualifications. T levels are developed in collaboration with employers so that the content meets the needs of industry and prepares students for work. The course includes a mixture of classroom learning around 80% and on the job experience around 20%. And that on the job experience takes place during an industry placement, which is a minimum of 45 days. This mirrors an apprenticeship where apprentices are in work for 80% of their time and in learning for 20%. Qualifications comprise a core component and one or more occupational specialisms which we will explore a little bit further in the next few slides. Progression options include skilled employment, further study, or a higher apprenticeship. T-levels will also attract UCAS points. T-levels are more rigorous and substantial, as Alan's already referred to, than most existing technical qualifications, with longer teaching time around about 50% more and one T level is comparable in size to three A levels. T levels have had a phased rollout. So they started in 2020 and you will see there are a number of T levels in those variety of those 15 routes. Um, and you will see they're being phased out, phased in rather over the next few years. There have been a couple of new T levels. So one of these is marketing, which will be introduced in 2025 and will sit alongside the business and management and administration T level. So it may be that as we go forward, we will see more T levels. As we move on to the next slide, this is where we're going to unpick what a T level is. So the T-level is a program, it's not a qualification. It's made up of a technical qualification and industry placement. There may be additional mandatory requirements such as health and safety. Students who haven't achieved English and maths at GCSE at grade four or above will continue to study these subjects. The technical qualification is made up of core knowledge and understanding and an occupational specialism. So on your slide, that's the bit that's in this sort of orange color at the top. The core is assessed by written exams and a national set employer project. Students also choose an occupational specialism which focuses on technical skills to prepare them to be as fully competent as possible. This is assessed through practical projects. The industry placement gives the students the opportunity to work in a real world environment, undertaking tasks which will be relevant to their chosen career. So right now, there are students in hospitals, 
in offices and on sites across the country, finding out more about the sector they want to join. The next slide is an example of how this works for a sector. So I think we might have skipped a slide there. Don't know if we can go back one. No? Okay, that's fine. So these, the, the slide would, um, in terms of how it works, we can go back, Paula, thank you, that's okay. Okay, so the way that it would work in a particular sector is, for example, if we take um, legal accounting and finance, in that sector, there are three T levels. The students will study some um, core, which will be common to those T levels. And then they will choose an occupational specialism. And between legal accounting and finance, there may well be around 10 different specialisms that they could choose. And that's where they utilize their practical skills. So as we move on to the next slide, the million dollar question is why should you get involved? This is an opportunity to kickstart your talent pipeline getting to know students who could fill those key, key skill gaps in your industry. It's an opportunity to attract a more diverse cohort from a wide range of backgrounds, but all with skills that will benefit your business, whether you're a larger or a smaller business. For businesses which operate within a specific geography, it is an opportunity to support that community. For larger national or international organizations, it is the opportunity to get ahead and increase your productivity. That's also true, of course, for small businesses. Perhaps most importantly, it offers you the opportunity to play a crucial role in education. I was at an event yesterday where T-level alumni, so we've already seen the first group of T-level students complete their course, they completed this summer, and they were talking about their experiences. They all said that the placement was the best bit of the course. They all talked about how they had benefited from the experience and the challenge. Some of those students had gone on to further study. Others had been snapped up by their placement providers and were actually working with their placement providers. We will explore how placements might work on the next slide. But there are many other ways in which you can get involved. You could offer guest speaker slots, run an insight taster event, site visits, run a masterclass, become a governor, speak to prospective students and or parents carers at an open evening. So if you're not quite ready for industry placements and you want to just dip your toe in, there are plenty of other opportunities. However, placements really rely on lots of opportunities for young people. And as I said, at the event I was at yesterday, those young people were so enthusiastic about the experience that they'd had. So if you feel you could offer a placement, we would love to hear from you. And there will be links um, where you can find out more information. You will get support from the school or college that you're working with. You can discuss what sort of model would suit your business. It could be day release. So one of the young people yesterday said that she'd been on a day release model. So that meant one day a week over around 18 months while she'd been at college. You could do block placements, which could say, oh, well, actually we feel that we can do two weeks here and two weeks there and two weeks somewhere else. You could also work with another employer so students can experience, have experiences of at the moment up to two um, employers so you could work alongside another employer or it could be a mixed opportunity so some day release some block however in whatever case the colleges will liaise with you about the tasks that the students could undertake and will prepare the student for the placement and they will be on hand should there be any problems. So if you get involved, you're not alone. There's a lot of support out there to help you. And we'd like to think that this is something that might be of interest to you in terms of how it can work to benefit your business 
as well as the young people in your local communities. And I think that might be the end of my presentation. So I'm going to hand back over to Alan. Kath, thank you very much indeed. That was extremely informative and well organised and, and elegantly put. So I'm sure people found that very helpful. Um, we're going to have a discussion now around some of the themes that you've raised, but let me, in order to have that discussion, welcome in that other two panellists. So a very warm welcome to Anne Ashwood, uh, Ashworth, who's the Head of Employee Apprenticeships at Pearson PLC. Um, Anne um, was an apprentice herself earlier in her career and has since worked in education um, with over 20 years of experience in further education and skills. And he's now uh, working at Pearson as Head of Employee Apprenticeships for the last five years. So a very warm welcome to you, Anne. And we've also got um, Bernie Turner, who is the Head of Learning at Dudley College of Technology, which is a, an extremely successful, outstanding um, college, obviously in the Midlands, um, with a very big apprenticeship program, a very strong curriculum. I think I've really embraced T levels as well, um, and is one of the best colleges in the country. So we're very pleased to have you here, Bernie. So um, I have some questions which I'm going to put to the panelists. And then when we've worked through some of those, which we hope are very relevant to the kind of questions that some of you on, on this call may have, we're going to open up for a Q&A through the chat towards the end. But I think we've got eight or nine questions. I'm going to start off first by coming back to, to Kath, just to ask a little bit about, well, if you were an employer, if you were giving advice to an employer who's thinking of getting involved in C-levels, but looking at this and thinking, well, where do I start? What do I do? What's the, what kind of advice would you give to them? So there are many routes. You could be in contact with your local college. Um, so there are colleges dotted all around the country. And increasingly, I think now the vast majority of our colleges um, who belong within AOC membership. So the vast number of colleges in England are now involved in placement. So you could get involved with T-levels through that, through that route. Um, you could also look at the government website on T-Level. So they've got, I think we've provided a link for that. And there's a whole plethora of information for employers about how employers can get involved. So if you want to be a little bit more neutral, particularly perhaps if you're a large employer and you're working nationally, well, you might think, well, we could have possibly offer opportunities north, south, Midlands, for example. So how do we do that? So you could look through those links. Um, and there is a, what I'd like to stress, Alan, I think, is that there's a lot of support out there. So you're not alone um, and you can find out from other employers as well, you know, how, how they found. So we've got um, there are employer case studies as well out there. So there are lots of opportunities. I think the first thing is, is taking that step and finding out a little bit more. Excellent, Kath. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to just pick up on that theme uh, that you've raised about the support available, because certainly at our college, we we have a dedicated team to support employers around T-levels and apprenticeships and other things. So I'm going to go over to Bernie. Um, I'm sure that Dudley has a very comprehensive kind of package of support. Would you like to just say a bit about if, if an employer came to you, for example, what kind of support would they expect to be able to get? So similar to yourself, we have um, a T-level industry placement team where they're obviously uh, the employer facing uh, department that give information, guidance, help, um, support, reassurance, all of those things. Um, a large, we, we, we work really well with our EEM, so they're the people that work with the apprenticeships that we, we, we have. So lots of our T-levels, of we've been able to work with them, companies then to sort of uh, look at the options around offering T-level placements as well as apprenticeships and that's worked really really well open and, and has opened many many opportunities for our T-level learners. Um, we've done lots of uh, employer engagement events which most colleges are running and offering where we do breakfast events, online events, Saturday mornings where you can come talk to the curriculum staff, have a look at the facility Facilities and, and really, you know, see if it's right for the company uh, to, to be offering that. 
um, we've done other things like meet the experts where the companies and the and the trades people have come in and they've spoken to the learners and the staff and sort of T-level um, opportunities have gone come from that. And I would like to say, probably similar to lots of sort of colleges, word of mouth, often companies will network, will talk to each other and they've, they, they will say, we've had these fantastic learners, they've come from Dudley College um, and then we've had other companies say, oh, we've, we've heard of this thing called T-levels, could somebody talk to us about it um so i think word of mouth also is is a, a really really good thing but and and it, the employer sort of networking events have been really really good for that that type of exercise excellent so so it's fair to say that if an employer was thinking of embarking on taking some industry placements they get a lot of support from their provider whether it's a, a college or otherwise and we're well set up to get to guide them through the process and make it as simple as possible yeah Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. And I'm going to come to you with a different question. So another area where employers may be concerned is about choosing the right kinds of projects and tasks for students to do during their industry placement to make it good quality and, and, and in order to make it uh, a worthwhile experience. And it's something obviously that the learners value very greatly. But, but employers might be worried about, about how to pitch that, but also having the time to devote to giving students the support at the beginning of their career. Can you offer us uh, some uh, advice or some of the benefits of your experience of placing students within your own workforce or the sorts of things that your colleagues would do to ensure the industry placement was a successful one? Yeah, and can I just say, I think our experience of working with providers and, and some schools as well that are involved in T-levels has absolutely echoed what um, Bernie said as well. Um, great support guiding everybody through the process. Um, what we did was made sure that we prepared our managers for T-levels. I mean, as soon as I heard about T-levels, I knew that they were going to be a really good fit for our business. Um, they link in beautifully in terms of talent pipeline for apprenticeships. We also link nicely for internships as well, if people are going on to university after their T-level. So for us, it was about making sure that our managers understood where they fitted in to workforce planning. It also meant that we needed to ensure that the managers that were involved in it were really well supported. So we did safeguarding training with the manager beforehand. Um, didn't have to, but I just think it raised the profile for them and made them think a lot more carefully about preparing for them coming into the business. We also were of the mindset that this is a proper job. This is not work experience. This is a placement. This is 45 days. It's a great way of, of interviewing a young person over time. So our jobs had to be meaningful. And so managers were required to put a proper job description together that built around the employer project. So again, good communication with the college about what that employer project would look like. And if the um, position in the team didn't give all the coverage, then we knew that we would shadow or put in secondments or that sort of thing so that planning ahead really really important and then really it's about making sure that um, the information we have available about who we are is there to share with the college for the students and also for the parents so we put a little pack together where we did some templates a letter of introduction a bit about who Pearson is as an employer because we might not be well known from an employer perspective um, very much about an introduction to the team copy of the job description and then we recruited like we would do for anybody else really we did some guidance about how to put a really good CV and covering letter together we worked with the college and the school about the candidates then the managers interview the candidates because of course they gain some experience from doing that as well um, and that's enabled us then to really a the students find out about us and us to find out about them and we had an absolutely superb experience I have to say with six T-level students that we had this year um, and we actually did a pilot back in 2019 early part of 2020 so we knew that we had the good basics to work from. That's fantastic and a really comprehensive answer and I think um, one of the themes from there that I, I pick up is, the, is the, the importance of the employer helping the young person and their parents to understand what the business is about, not assuming that that's a given. I, I find young people fascinated by the workplace because they know so little about it. They are absolutely fascinated but and they ask lots of questions and they, things that they really need to understand in order to, 
to do well on that placement mm. and making that as simple as possible is, is a really important theme I think from what you you've just said totally yeah thank you Kath was there anything else you think any other advice you give to employers uh in terms of this uh, of, of um this what they need to have in place to support good placements is there anything that you think we've missed out I think it's thinking about your so thinking about what you are looking for in terms of you as an employer what sort of skills gaps that you have and how could these young people potentially fill those skills gaps so um thinking about a project because one of the things um i think that, that Anne's just mentioned is the fact that it is really it's, it's very different from work experience this isn't coming and sort of observing and shadowing um somebody was saying to me yesterday that they've got students in a hospital at the moment um and um you know that they're really ha literally hands-on so it's thinking about a meaningful project and for example with digital students they could well be um sorting out a problem for you so they could be solving a problem in terms of well actually we really need this reviewed or this looked at or this made up or some or that so i think that's the key thing is think about what you could offer but i would also say reach out and speak to your local provider speak to the you know like like dudley or speak to your local college and say you know how can we work together because there may be opportunities that you haven't thought about and the other thing that i think becomes clear is that you may for example um be a finance business but as part of finance you'll also have digital you may have catering yeah. um you may have grounds people depending on the size of your organization so also i think it's worth thinking a little bit outside the box um, because there may be you may be able to support in a variety of different t levels but i think the, the main thing is to take that first step and colleges schools any t level provider is going to be absolutely delighted to talk to you um, and the other thing is that if a T-level isn't quite right for you right now, then there may be other opportunities, as I said, that you other ways that you can get involved. And I think it's all about collaboration and how we can work together to meet these skills gaps and increase productivity. So, you know, it's just worth going out and finding out more about it. Superb. Thank you very much, Kath. Um, one of the themes that Anne alluded to was the importance of matching students to, to industry placements in the most effective way. And clearly there's an intensity to industry placements. They're not work experience, they're very different. Um, you're hoping to have the best experience for the young person is when they do actually do something that the company really values and feels is very important. So that example I think you gave for digital uh, is a re really good one. Uh, certainly people in my generation, it's always young people who sort your digital stuff out for you. They seem to have this secret power for understanding how to do it, which has just passed us by. But, you know, that, that it is about getting the right person to the right place. So I'm going to go to Bernie first, then back to Anne, to say, what, what, what do you do at Dudley? And then what, would, what would, advice would you give Anne in terms of getting the right matching process? What, what, what do you do to make sure that that's done properly? If I'm really honest, uh, we do very similar things to what Anne is very much saying she's doing. So I think it, you know, really good practice being shared, if I'm completely honest with you. But we do a, uh, so we have the employer come in and they do an information session. So they'll talk about roles and responsibilities. They'll talk about the company expectations, um, you know, give them a little insight as to sort of what they're going to be entering into. Um, the students then are all sort of um, put together an application so, so they go through a selection process like they would with any job that they sort of applied for moving forward um we i'll be honest as part of their t-level what we do is they have a uh, sort of get an employer ready um project that they we do as part of their t-level and this is all sort of embeds within it so they they do the the sort of the selection process where they do a cv they do a personal statement the company then are invited back in and we shortlist them or we email them to them depending on what works best for them they shortlist which learners they 
they think would best suit the you know that their, 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 their company and what they need them to be um, we then carry out sort of mini interviews with the learners with the company um, the students some companies have also asked for, asked for them to provide a character reference which I think has been really really interested and, and and you know gives them a real understanding of what sort of they might do if they ran, went out into sector sometimes that's the lecturer sometimes if they've got a part job that ref part-time job that reference might come from them and then the students sort of get formal notification of of the outcome now it all sounds very um uh, very official it just sort of shows them that maybe if one isn't right for them we then look at well what other opportunities have we got for you uh, but it gives them a real insight as to what what real life is about but it also ensures that the company then uh, sort of get the people with the the skills they think are best matching that the opportunities that they have superb thank you very much bernie and is there anything you'd want to add to that um, not much but a little bit um one of the things that we've learned over working on t levels for a little while is you know how can we make things better for the young person? So what we introduced just a few weeks ago was a, an opportunity for them to actually come into our head office. And I just think that gave them um, a really good feel for what it likes to be part, I mean, being part of a corporate organization, but it would work equally as well in an SME, for example. And we actually brought them into the head office for interviews last week. So they had short half hour interviews with the managers. And I'm pleased to say manager was going to take one, they're now taking two. They were that impressed. And I think it's about that relationship. And we're, we're earlier in on the process. So they've only just started their T-level, whereas before they were in their second year. I think that helps. So we're meeting them early on. And we're also going to do some sessions into the T-level as well. So I think I'm being nabbed to do something on personal branding, for example. That's great. You know, if, if we've got that ability to, to be part of it and we add something, then um, I'm all for it. So, um, yeah, very much as you said, though, um, or hopefully, yeah, great, good practice. Excellent. Thank you very much, both of you. I've got two last questions before we open it up to everybody else. So the first one, as you can imagine, we're going to have to have a question about social mobility. It's an event organised by the Social Mobility Commission. Um, I, I, I would say that I think that T-levels, one of their advantages is that they allow people to experience um, work um from a back, when when that might not be something they come across in their background otherwise so that might be lots of you know that might be somebody whose family is very academic but they want to they're, they're, they feel their their kind of natural affinities towards more technical subjects or it might be somebody from a very disadvantaged background who doesn't get this experience of the workplace i also think from an employer's point of view it allows employers to see a wider range of talent and to give a wider range of opportunities to a wider range of people so I can see everybody's nodding but I'm going to go to you each in turn and just say from your point of view if you were to to describe how you think T-level supports social mobility what would you say I'm going to come to you first Dan. I think you're right you know it, it puts in front of our managers a different type of candidate pool um, and from my perspective it opens their eyes to having younger people in and the benefit they bring. I think, uh, Catherine, you mentioned about a project. I mean, we had a uh, four come in this, this year and they actually redesigned one of our web pages. And, you know, that was incredibly productive. It needed to be done. And it opened up the manager's eyes to the fact that young people are capable of doing this sort of thing. So for me, that, that absolutely is a key part of T-Levels is bringing in younger people and being part of our uh, workforce development, our skills of the future. Excellent, thank you, Anne. Bernie, I'm going to come to you next. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, we've we've run historically run diploma qualifications and then obviously we've we've come over to the T level. So our employers have sort of experienced both. Um, our company, the companies we work with now are actually saying they'd rather have T level T level students to diploma students, which was a bit of a shocker for us. But I think they've got a fantastic balance of the the, the high academic skills uh, with the support uh, and the work that the college are doing with them and the employer they're growing their own almost and I think the companies really like the fact that they're working with these learners early on uh, investing 
so much into them um, and then coming out with fantastic practitioners at the end of it. So that's sort of the, the feedback that we've had. Uh, and as our learners have then been offered higher apprenticeships and, and all sorts through the companies they've trained at. So it's doing all the things that we would hope it would do for the company, but also for the learners. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Bernie. And Kath, would you like to add anything on social mobility? Yeah, I mean, again, I'd like to refer to the event I was at yesterday where we had some alumni and it was so amazing to see the confidence. So these were young people, we're actually at the House of Lords yesterday, and these were young people who got up and spoke in front of a crowd of adults, most of whom they didn't know. So I think it had really increased their confidence and a lot of them put that down to the placement and the opportunity that had given them. The opportunity, as you said, Alan, to venture into something a little bit different. So a lot of young people who go to college have a job in a supermarket, a leisure center or whatever, but the opportunity to go and do a placement at the BBC, to do a placement with Wilmot Dixon, um, so a large construction company, they're not the opportunities that you'd get normally. Um, and so I think it's so important that we enable those young people to have those experiences, to broaden horizons and show them the opportunities that are available to them. Um, and so that for me is the, is the key. And the fact that as well that, you know, nowadays, you know, I know a lot more young people go on to university and it is quite, you know, it's the right opportunity for many young people, but, but for many, the level of debt, particularly with cost of living, is quite off-putting. And this is a different way of achieving the same ends. Um, so you can go on and perhaps do a degree apprenticeship um, a little bit later. So um, I really do think it offers opportunities to young people, but also to employers, as, as we've all been saying. Great. Thank you, Kat. I'm going to pick up on that theme again in a minute because I want to ask last, my last question is going to be about skills gaps. But one observation I just make before that is to say that. So one of the criticisms that people sometimes make is that T-levels, because of the industry placements, um, there's a geographical imbalance because, of course, we have geographical inequalities in our economies. So in some places, Oldham is one of these, there are fewer private sector opportunities, particularly at the higher levels than you might find in other places. I would say that in those areas, it becomes really important for the public sector to step in. And it goes back to the point you made before, Kath, that it's not just about what sector you're in. It's the full range of opportunities you have in your business. Every business has digital. Every business has finance um a whole range of other skills in there so it's in, to encourage people to think laterally about the contribution they can make and what that can bring to their business so that we see the public and private sectors working together to give as many opportunities as possible um, so you know for us our biggest growth areas are uh health and construction which uh you know that's not untypical of other areas i think um Dudley will have some probably some more engineering than we might have, for example, and other areas have different different things. But I do think that uh, it's to, really if employers could think laterally about the range of opportunities they can provide, that helps greatly. That's a lead into my last question, which is from an employer's point of view, of course, I'm sure many employers on this call will have a, a sense of social uh, um, responsibility. And one of the things I'll be interested in is social mobility and what they can do to en enable uh, that to happen. But they've also got to run effective businesses. And so the biggest priority, I think, for employers will be how to address skills gaps. So I'm going to go in reverse the order I've just gone in and say, ask Kath first. Kath, how do T levels close skills gaps? I think they're ideal to close skills gaps because it goes back to that opportunity for employers to meet young people, as, as Anne said, has happened at her business. Um, at Pearson, whereby you're working with young people over a, quite a long period of time, you get to know them, um, you get to find out what their strengths are, where they perhaps need a little bit of extra help. So if you're thinking about the fact that you've got succession planning, thinking about your skills gaps in your own business, then T-levels are ideal because you can be thinking about perhaps two or three years time when you are going to need more employees more employees in a particular part of your business and working with your local provider to find that pipeline so absolutely spot on excellent thank you kath um i think it's twofold as well it's it's a skills gap 
with regards to the T-level in the students, but it's also helping existing members of staff as well. Because, you know, we're raising the um, interpersonal skills of our up and coming managers through working with T-levels. They're learning something from the young people who are learning the latest skills. And because the T-level is written by employers, then it really is meeting the immediate skills needs, but also the near future. And it's a fast paced changing world that we are in. Um, and they're just adding so much. So I think, you know, there's huge benefits of, of being involved in T-levels from that perspective of skills gap, not least the fact that, you know, it's the candidate pool, it's having them there for a really good length of time. So you really get to know them. The other nice thing is that we, we can put them in front of other parts of the business, both in terms of learning, but also in terms of potential job opportunities. So again, they're getting that added experience and our managers are also getting that experience too so it's very much a two-way street and and that's where the return on investment comes into play it, not just the young person but what we're getting out of it from Absolutely. other experiences as well that's a really interesting perspective isn't it and that it's the wider range of of skills in the organization that that, that uh, it, this helps with mm. and bernie can, i mean one of the themes one of the issues for me is that when this works well the industry placement is almost like the best careers experience and advice you could ever get. So would you agree? And would, what would you say about how this helps to close the skills gap? To be honest, picking up very much on what Anne said, Anne has absolutely nailed it, to be quite honest with you. But from a from a sort of skills gap, when you look at uh, locally and nationally where there are shortfalls and companies that approach us and common themes, it helps you support your local community. It helps, uh, I'll be honest, you're able to go in and work with the students from a very early point to ensure that we're getting these learners in, you know, fantastic placements on the right sort of programs um like I say to, for us we've got flagship placements so we've got companies who invest very heavily in the T-levels and all I can say is that's increasing on a monthly basis more and more employers are saying this is what we'd like to get get behind these are the types of learners we'd like to invest in and I think it is an investment I think they invest that that time that you know the effort uh, the compassion the energy and the students do amazing things for them so they get you know my mum used to always say you reap what you sow and I think very that's very very true of the the, the types of learners that are on the T well generally but on the T level particularly um and and like like with Anne we we've had learners that had what uh, companies that come and said we'll have one learner we'll just have one now sort of been a few years in a bit like yourself now it's gone from having one learner to five learners so I think that in itself sort of speaks for it for itself doesn't it so brilliant I think that's really really helpful thank you we've now so I think we've exhausted our first set of questions it's a really interesting answer so thank you to all of you for your contributions so far we've now got about 10 minutes left and we've got four questions from the floor so if anybody wants to add any more, please keep emailing through to Paula. She'll post them up on the chat for us. Um, so I've got those four. I'm going to allocate them out. One, I've got one for Anne, one for Bernie, and then I've got two uh, for Kath, and then we'll see if there's any more left at the end. So, Anne, I thought you'd be the uh, could be a well placed to answer this one. How do T levels differ from apprenticeships? Thank you. Um, now I've become early talent, not just apprenticeships. That seems appropriate, doesn't it? Um, they differ because it's, it's that mix. It's the 80% of learning as opposed to 20% you know, on, on the job. But you've still got that really strong vocational element to it. The nice thing is it's about progression as well. So somebody can do a T-level and then progress on to a higher level apprenticeship. The key difference, of course, is they're not employed. You know, they're not on a contract of employment. They're still in learning, but they are getting some of the benefits of being an employee. Um, I mean, just, just accessing all of our uh, usual technology, for example, is just part of that. So for me, that, that's your main technical difference is they're not employed, but there are definitely progression routes between the two. Uh, so they link very strongly together. Superb. And um, thank you. Very well explained. I'm going to extend the second question extends the theme, but I'm going to pass on to Bernie for this one. Um, why would a 16 year old choose to do a T level 
rather than an apprenticeship where they will get paid and on completion still achieve a very similar level of qualification. For lots of students, uh, it largely comes down to them as individuals, their confidence, uh, the ways they like to learn, the ways they like to train. Um, and I think that with regards to the confidence, it's a massive thing going out into the industry. And they want to see if the industry that they think they want to go into is the industry they want to go into. There's not many people at 16 that know what they want to do for the rest of their life. Uh, and I think the T-level is a fantastic way of them sort of getting the the ins and outs of how the industry works, the knowledge base, the hands-on skills that will then put them in a fantastic place if they, if, you know, when they complete, if that's what they decide to do. I think, as I say, for some students, they, they absolutely want to continue with their studies, but they want to continue in a slightly different way to maybe they have at school, and this gives them the opportunity to do that. Excellent. Thank you very much. It's a great answer. Um, I've got two last questions here. I'm going to ask them both to Kat. Um, and then we'll see if there's any left at the end. So, Kat, one of the questions is, it, it is my understanding that T-level students are not paid, so which expenses will providers be reimbursing? So you're quite right. Um, placements are not necessarily paid, so um, employers can choose to pay. Um, employers can choose to pay expenses as well. So I think I'm right, I'm looking at Bernie here, but I think I'm right in saying that some employers do um, agree to uh, reimburse travel expenses, for example, um, and may give the students some degree of subsistence um, for the placement. So there's no recommended um, payment for the student, but it's at the discretion of the employer. And as I say, many employers have decided to reimburse students. Excellent. Thank you, Kat. And again, a last very factual question. Are T levels only in England and what is available in the other UK regions? So, no, they're not available in other parts of the UK. At the moment, they are um, only available in England. Um, so other parts of the UK would have um, a variety of vocational and technical qualifications. So just as we have a variety of technical and vocational qualifications here in England. So, T-levels are very much, as you know, education is devolved um, and so it is an England only policy and um, let's see what happens as we go forward, um, possibly if T-levels take off and as Bernard, Bernie's already said, she's had lots of employers asking um, to take on more students, let's see what happens, but at the moment they are very much um, England only and only for 16 to 18 year olds as well. Excellent, Kath, thank you very much, that was extremely helpful at the end. So I don't think we've got any more questions from the floor. Um, so can I just first of all say thank you very much to Kath, to Anne and to Bernie for three excellent panellists, uh, very knowledgeable about the subject. It's a, I think uh, there's a growing enthusiastic field of expertise around T-levels developing um, and you will find similar enthusiasm I think in lots of colleges across the country if you're in for wondering who to go to locally but of course please come back to us at the Commission or to Kath at the AOC if you're not sure who to talk to, we'll by all means signpost you on. Um, and please, by all means, feedback to Paula and the team in terms of the event and the other events of the similar kind that you'd like us to do. Um, but thank you very much all of you for attending and a huge thank you to our panellists. I hope you found it useful. We've enjoyed doing it, so I hope you found the time well spent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. Um, and just as, as you're all leaving, I'm just going to share my screen um, just with some up and coming events. Um, so we have a um, we have a masterclass on data. I know that's quite difficult and challenging for people in terms of collecting social mobility data, data of their workforce. So that's in January. So set your diaries, something for 2023 to look forward to. Very exciting stuff. Um, and then also we've got further resources. So we will share those with you and links that Kath and, and Bernie and Alan have mentioned as well. Um, if there's any questions uh, unremained, we'll, we will come back to you on those. Um, but just like to thank you all for joining and um, see you at our next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paula.